From the Chicago Sun-Times newsroom, I'm Natasha Karecki, and this is Off Message, our weekly political talk show where we give you an insider's look at some of the biggest political stories of the week. Joining me today is Associated Press political reporter and this year's Pulitzer Prize winner, Sarah Burnett, our Sun-Times columnist, Mark Brown, and Springfield Bureau Chief, Dave McKinney. So we're starting off with pension reform. I want to commend uh, the members of the General Assembly for passing historic legislation today. Dave, let's start with Pat Quinn. What can you say about how quickly he signed this bill and how quietly he signed this bill? He wanted this to be kind of a muted response because, you know, this constituency that he essentially is goring, you know, he's going to have to rely on these unions in his re-election bid. So I, I think he, he was trying to avoid the dog and pony show that, that you know, to just basically not stick a, you know, a stick in their eye. Right respect the retirement security of all of our public servants and I think it's important that we understand that the action of the General Assembly today in a bipartisan way will make our state stronger and will make the people stronger. There's just, just some really hard feelings out there right now. The unions are, you know, operate on two levels, the, the leadership and, and the people and I think it's going to be hard for him to, to bring around you know, the state worker to forgive him. The leadership for them is going to come down to what are the choices. If it's, if it's between Pat Quinn and Bruce Rauner, who wants to take away everything from him, and, you know, I think that's a, you know, a different matter. When we talk about the winners and losers here politically, you know, you look at the Bruce Rauner campaign a lot. Mm -hmm. He's gotten a lot of attention. What does this do to his campaign to shake up Springfield? He definitely put his money, literally, um, on the bet that you know, being against this proposal was the way to go. The problem being that it ultimately passed and that in the process there is more division now among the Republican Party. Some of the Republican leaders and some of the key Republicans involved in this are none too happy. And um, as Mike Madigan said after the vote, one of the things he was thrilled about, you could tell, was, was right. that he had just blown up a major um, campaign issue for Bruce Rauner. What does that mean for the Kirk Dillards of the world and the Dan Rutherfords of the world? Dave, do you think that they are still, they're trying to be in contention now for some union support here in the primary? Well, I mean, the unions have never rallied behind Kirk Dillard or, or Rutherford or, or Bill Brady. They, they don't want Rauner to win, clearly, but I think that they, that there's just no, no uh, appetite for either of these candidates. So I think you're going to see a kind of a lower turnout kind of thing from the unions, which, which ultimately hurts Quinn. We could talk about that for a while, but let's shift gears here to something a little lighter. This week we've had two ex-cons who are also ex-politicians filing once again for public office. Al Sanchez wants William Beaver's seat, and of course that was vacated because Beavers went to prison. We have found a loophole for our ex-felons <laughs> to uh, run for, uh, for public office, county commissioner. And that's always, uh, you know, that's a nice, easy seat to, for a lot of people to to pick off as it is. So, you know, I'm wondering how many other guys we've got. You know, maybe, this, Ike maybe this is where we'll well. put Blagojevich yeah. when, he, when he comes back. Maybe. Um, Someone in our newsroom today was joking that we're going to need just an official third party. You've got your Democrats and your Republicans and now um, your ex-cons. Ex <laughs> I wouldn't bet against Carruthers. The guy, he's a good politician. I mean, I covered both of those trials and it was not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Chicago voters are I hope not, but <laughs> I don't have that much faith. Well, we're almost running out of time, but let's not forget the quote of the week. Mine is from House Speaker Mike Madigan. Right after the pension vote, um, he put his sights on Bruce Rauner saying, quote, my view is he would like to blow it up so he can maintain a campaign issue. What do you got for us this week? Well, I brought a Mike Madigan quote also. All right. You can tell that we relish those moments when he comes <laughs> out and talks to us. Toward the end of all the discussions about pensions and things, one of the reporters threw out a question to him about the five-year anniversary coming up of Rod Blagojevich's arrest and asked him, asked the speaker if he had anything he wanted to say about that. And as he was walking away, he turned to all of us and smiled and said, celebrate. So <laughs> there continues to be no love lost between those two men. Wow. All right, well, I'm, f I'm uh, in the pension debate uh, also. This was Senator Linda Holmes who said that the pension bill is no different than a thief coming into your house in the night and stealing your valuables. Now, I don't agree with her, but if you're going to give good quote, I mean, jump right in there like that. Yeah, there you go. 
All right, Dave McKinney. I'm going to go for the trifecta with House Speaker Mike Madigan. This bill would not have passed without me. That was the very first thing he said. All right. Well, thank you all uh, for joining me this week. And with that, we'll see you next week.